All right, thanks a lot, Hajara, giving us the latest. Uh, interesting that of keen interest to them is the National Assembly election. Indeed, like, indeed. Yeah. While everybody else is talking about the presidential yeah. election, they are more interested in the National Assembly elections, different strokes for different okay. folks. Now we're moving the discussion to something. It still has to do with logistics, but logistics of a different kind. And this time we're talking about the welfare of ad hoc staff. That is the people that voters are going to meet actually at the polling stations. The presiding officer, the assistant presiding officer, and other such uh, staff. And some of the heart-rending pictures that we saw over the weekend before the elections were postponed of some of them, particularly the youth coppers, uh, in various uh, not too comfortable positions. Uh, for that discussion, we're being joined from our Abuja studios by Mr. Sanusi Abdul Rashid, who is the Acting Director, Core Welfare and Inspectorate of the NYSC in Abuja, as well as the Executive Secretary of the National Human Rights Commission, Mr. Antoni Ojuku. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Of course, still with us in our Lagos studios is uh, Dr. Uh, Abiola Kiyode Afalabi, the Chair of the Transition Monitoring Group. Well, since we are talking about mainly the NYSC as they form a large chunk of this uh, ad hoc staff, uh, Mr. Abdul Rashid, I'll start with you. When you saw those pictures over the weekend, what did you do? Um, we first seriously for our core members um, because we were on ground. We were going around too to see things for ourselves. We first seriously for the core members. And at the same time, we sympathize with the commission um, because uh, this is not the first time we are participating in the election program. And in the past, um, we have not seen it as bad as the experience we had last uh, weekend. But all the same, um, we made our reports and we have been meeting with the commission since uh, the last few days to see a way of putting things right. Um, like since the issue of uh, RAC, the idea of RAC came into being, I mean registration area centers, um, we were part of Oshun and Nikiti election. Um, the RAC were properly provided for by the commission. Uh, this time around, um, we cannot do but to sympathize with the commission, more so when the chairman had communicated, informing us that logistics is the cause uh, uh, of the postponement of the election. Uh, like I said, Mr. Abdul Rashid, I'm sorry, Mr. Abdul Rashid, at this sure. point, I must ask, the question yeah. I, 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 you, you've answered to some extent, the question, but I'm talking from the viewpoint of the NYSC. These coppers are yeah. in your custody. You are simply loaning them to yeah. INEC for this national assignment. So primarily, they are your responsibility. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. When you saw some of those pictures, as you pointed out, you've been going around. What did you do on that occasion? Did you make any alternative arrangement even while you were getting in, uh, in touch with INEC to know what was going on. Because some of those, some of those coppers who posted those pictures were saying that the NYSC had abandoned them. Hello? Um, you see, the memorandum of understanding between INEC and the National Youth Service Corps is specific about the welfare provision for core members at all the racks. It is the duty of the INEC to do that. Ours on the ground is to see that these things are in place. Um, they are water, buckets, and of course, um, toiletries and other things to make the core members convenient at that spot. So, ours is to go around. We don't just push core members. When we, when we give an assignment to core members, we have a tradition in the National Youth Service Corps. We we'll be on the field with the core members to see things for ourselves. We were there 
and we communicated to management about our observations and we did say to the commission and since that time like i said we have been working around to better the lots in fact in readiness for the next uh, 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 the schedule elections Okay, Mr. Abrashe, sorry to come back to it again, but you spoke about that memorandum. Yeah. And what, what exactly is contained in it? I know you've talked about buckets and everything, but when we spoke to one of the INOC officials, he had talked about basic accommodation. And I wondered what basic accommodation yeah. was, because most of them we saw were sleeping outside. What is the accommodation provision for the core members? And you know we're talking about Saturday, which is a couple of days away. Yes, you have observed. What have you now recommended for where they will sleep? The, the, the idea of rack, if I may say, came into being not quite long ago. And the idea is to make a basic accommodation, at least where core members can lay their heads. The idea is to, is to, is to ease the distribution of materials early enough for the election. So what we have at that temporary abode is uh, what the core member will need for their convenience, like I said, security first, uh, basic items such as buckets, toiletries, and of course, mattress for core members to lay their heads. And I need to let you know that in these circumstances, it is within that night that core members will collect basic materials. So what they need to lay their heads is just about a few hours before the main election, you know, we start. So all this, we, are, we have uh, 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 met with the commission to make sure that things are in place. And as I'm talking to you, uh, I'm saying with confidence that everything, I think, will be in place before uh, the next the schedule elections. Does that include medicals? Because when we're trying to collate some of the stories that were coming out, um, a particular core member talked about being stung by a scorpion, and there was no, nothing like medical attention on that night. So in the arrangement you're making, doesn't include medicals, because some of them, you know, are, are quite young. Definitely. Definitely. There are basic medical facilities. In fact, among them, we have trained professionals, doctors, nurses that move around from one location to the other to attend to call members. And uh, not that one alone. We have a situation room and we have, we have, we have empowered all the call members with necessary uh, phone numbers when they are in distress, you know, to communicate to us so that we'll be, we'll be there, you know, to attend to their needs in case of emergency. Okay, Mr. Like Abdul Rashid, last, I, I don't want it to seem as if we are barracking you, but again, we've got to take a break in a little while, but I want you to quickly answer this before we go on break. And when we come back from the break, we'll go to Mr. Ojuku. There's the issue of their allowances. That's another thing that many of them spoke about, that they, allowed, they had a series of allowances that they were supposed to be paid, and many of them, as at the time, hadn't been paid. Can you enlighten us in any way about that? At the moment, at the moment, payment of allowances is going on all over the Federation. In fact, initially, we have a situation where the commencement of payment is irregular, you know, in many states. But since we have met with the Commission, the messages has gone round. And if I may tell you, the training allowance, which is 4,500, is being paid, you know, all over the Federation. Uh, the 4,000 allowance being feeding and transport for that very day, too, is being paid. Um, I Mr. Think that Rashid, as you were talking, allowance. Dr. Afolabi here was indicating that how an experience with that payment. Uh, Dr. Afolabi, do, do you want yeah. to... Yeah, but, but, but my, my, my issue is also is, this is a question of accountability. You can't send uh, youth coppers, you know, to a place without being sure of how you are going to keep them. And it's not happening for the first time. 
You are not mm -hmm. sure about the allowance. You are not sure. The, if you look at all the things we saw on social media, you know, about where uh, uh, the youth coppers were kept, it's actually not something that should be happening in this country. In other countries, they will be calling for the head of the, uh, the, the leader of the NYC. You know, so I, I think it's about accountability, and that's why we kept talking about logistics. If we don't attach the discussion, of, because if you're talking about credibility of election, accountability is also important. You know, administrative accountability. It's important for us to be able to uh, also hold people to account for why things are happening the way Okay, Dr. Akira, I know you're passionate about it. And um, as like we said, we're not trying to attack him, but just to find out what we're doing, what he can do better. So we'll find out that on the other side of the break. <laughs>